You are tuned in to another edition of Americana Music Profiles, brought to you by Americana Rhythm Music Magazine and AmericanaMusicMagazine.com. I'm your host, Greg Tutwiler. Let's jump right in to the next exciting interview. Daryl Mosley grew up in Waverly, a small town in Tennessee, where he still resides, but he has toured many places and played with many people throughout his musical career. He helped form the band New Tradition before joining the legendary Osborne Brothers in 2001. From there, he helped form the Farmhands in 2010 before launching out on his solo career in 2020 and his debut record on Pinecastle, The Secret of Life. Daryl is my guest on this edition of Americana Music Profiles. Hi, Daryl. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us today. Glad we could make this happen in this busy, busy world we've got going on around us right now. (laughs) Yes, no doubt. Uh, So you are in, do I have this right, Waverly, Tennessee? Waverly, Tennessee. Waverly is about an hour west of Nashville, right off of I-40. Okay, all right. And you grew up there? Yeah, yeah, I've lived here my whole life. And one of the unique things about our place is that we're, because we're an hour from Nashville and an hour from Jackson, Tennessee, which is the next bigger city, you know, we're a little bit isolated. Uh, it's not really convenient to live here and work in the big towns like okay. a lot of people do in the bedroom communities. So, so we're still, you know, things had not changed that much around here over the years. You still see, you know, kids on their bikes down the sidewalk and, you know, that sort of thing. It's it's a pretty late back area, very Mayberry-like. Yeah, yeah, and you grew up there, right? Yeah, born and raised out here. Okay. How did uh, how did music become a thing for you in, in, in a small town like that, kind of isolated away from the rest of the world, like you said? Well, you know, my mom, she sang and played guitar when I was a kid. Mom's a little bitty lady, had this big Connie Smith kind of voice, you know, played guitar. Uh-huh. And, and she would play and sing at church and that sort of thing, but... Uh, so when I was an early teenager, I started learning to play on her guitar. But one thing we do have in our little county here is uh, Loretta Lynn's ranch. Loretta Lynn has lived here for many, many years. Oh, yeah, and okay. In fact, I was in first grade with her twin daughters. I've known the family wow. my whole life. Okay. And uh, so when I was a teenager, I went to work as my summer job singing out at her, out at her ranch. Oh, cool. Okay. And uh, so that was my first taste of... Being on stage and learning how to sing in front of an audience and yeah. what makes a good show and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So as your career moved forward, you you really uh, began to embrace songwriting. When did you feel like that was something you wanted to pursue? You know, it's funny. I, I was I was working out at the ranch and and got a chance to, to visit Loretta on several occasions. And, you know, this was probably in the late 70s, early 80s, when she was just, you know, as huge as, as she could be. And, and she was always so wonderful to me and really warm and encouraging. And But I'll never forget a conversation I had with her at the house one day. She said, um, she said, because she knew I wanted to be in music, and she said, darling, did you write songs? And I said, no, I don't. And she says, well, honey, you need to learn to write. She said, hmm. a lot of people can sing them, but the good ones can write them too. Yeah. And I'll never forget that. So I really started at that point pursuing the craft and learning how to, you know, what makes a good song and really started trying to think in that in that direction. And, and that truly you know, changed my life. Yeah. Huh. Well, have you have you been uh, full-time kind of in the music business from from that point forward, or did you do some other things before music became a, a career? Yeah, I mean, I did some other things, out of, you know, right out of high school and college, but but in 19, I guess about 1989, uh, I was actually uh, I put a band together, a new tradition, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, and with, with Danny Roberts, Danny, of course, is with the Graskels, and, and uh, uh, the, the, we put that band together back then, and so all through the 90s, we were doing, you know, 150, 160 dates a year wow. uh, with that band. So from, from about, you know, 1989 or 90, you know, on music has basically been one I've done. Yeah, were you writing a lot of the songs for the New Tradition band? I was, and that was great because you know those guys were the writers. Okay, and so when we needed a song, I would just I just write one. Yeah, and so you know they were really they were really encouraging as far as you know you know encouraging me to write and and to create stuff for the band and 
And uh, I didn't know if any of it was any good. Uh-huh. You know, I've looked back on it now and realized that well, a lot of that stuff held up pretty well. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. proud of a lot of that stuff. Yeah, that's cool. The, when you do you have a writing process uh, uh, some sort of formula you follow uh, every songwriter seems to kind of have this different um, answer to that question what is it for you when you when you get the the inspiration to write a song what does that look like you know sometimes it's in fact, especially if I'm writing by myself you know I've, tr- I've I've always explained it it's it's almost like trying to remember a song you used to know hmm. you know I'll I'll start kind of singing it, you know, or some, you know, I'll have some of the words and not all of them, and, and it's it's almost like the song is just, just outside of your reach, and you're having to really stretch to kind of pull it back in. But like it's almost like the song was already there. So a lot of times, you know, it's just a matter of of, of sitting down long enough to, you know, to, to, to do that. Right. I always keep a, on, on my phone, it used to be a notebook, it's a phone now, of course, I used to always keep a list of, of ideas and things. Uh-huh. And so when I'm co-writing, you know, we'll pull out those ideas and kind of see what what strikes a chord with everybody. Do you have a a season or a time of the week, or is it do you, is it structured, or do you just kind of when you get the inspiration, you sit down and write it? Well, the co writing stuff is a little bit more structured, just because you know trying to get everybody's schedules together. Uh-huh. And so that process is a little different because we will sit down with a night, you know, come up with you know, toss around some ideas and and kind of start from scratch both of us, you know, and that sort of thing. But but beyond that, no, for the most part, it's, it'll just kind of come when it comes. I, I try to police myself to, you know, discipline myself to, to play guitar every day, to spend some time with the guitar and all that, and and just working on, on musical ideas, melody ideas, and that sort of thing. And, and, and lots of times songs will, will be born out of that. Uh-huh. But it, it it does require the discipline of actually sitting down and yeah. on, you know, on a on a daily basis and and thinking yeah. like a songwriter. Yeah. Now you've had other people record your music as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 been it's been great. You know, and, you know country artists like you know Lynn Anderson and you know Bobby Osborne, uh, Josh Williams and Bluegrass. Yeah. Uh, probably the the most successful thing I did was a Southern gospel group, the Booth Brothers recorded a song I wrote that was actually made the list as one of the top 30 Southern gospel songs of all time. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. Are, are you, do you write songs specifically for an artist, or do you have the collection that you've written and just pitch them, or do they ask for songs? How does that process work when you're writing for somebody else? Actually, it's all of the above. I mean, sometimes I, I have written songs. I wrote a song that I, we recorded that was introduced years ago called Prodigal Son, and that was always one of Josh Williams' favorite songs. And so when he recorded the solo album, he recorded that one. Okay. Um, there are, uh, but then uh, there's, uh, Carolina Blue, Blue Rex Band Carolina Blue has, yeah. has recorded a song of mine on their new album, and that actually came from, from Bobby Powell and I, who we were friends. He, you know, we were talking, and he's like, man, I wish you would write us something for the new record. Okay, cool. And so I sat down and was listening to their music and tried to write something that kind of fit what they did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I've done some of that, too. How, when you write songs, how do you decide, hey, I, I'm going to do this one, this one's mine, versus, you know what, I think I, I like the song, but it probably suits so-and-so better. Do Do, do you have that? forethought to to realize that you want to hang on to one for yourself sometimes uh sometimes uh especially because you know when i was when i was writing for the, you know, the bands that i was in there would be something that i knew this was this was our kind of song this mm-hmm. is something that i knew that, that we would want to put out the other times you know i've written things and i say you know this I'm, I, it's a, it's a good, a good song i'm proud of the song but it doesn't necessarily fit my style or our style Right. And so those are a little bit more of a free agent when it comes to, you know, pitching those out. Yeah, okay. So you formed the band New Tradition, and at some point, um, what, I guess uh, 2009, 2010, uh, did that band dissolve, or did you just leave and, and move on to your next project? Actually, I left New Tradition initially in, in, in about 2000. We had um, we were so busy, but when I first when I joined the band back 10 years prior, you know, I was I was married, but I didn't have any children. Uh-huh. Ten years later, I had three. Okay, <laughs> and you know, and I was missing all the cool band stuff. You know, and, yeah. and we were gone a lot. And and I just thought, you know, I just I'm, I, I don't really I don't want to be gone so much. And so I left the band, thinking 
then I was probably done as a performer. Then wow. I would probably just write and that'd be the end of it. Mm-hmm. But about a year after I was out of the band, uh, Tim Graves called me and he had he had gone to work with the Awesome Brothers. Gene Wooten, who was their double player, had passed away and Tim was playing Dobro and they had lost their, their bass player harmony singer. And Sonny said, do you know anybody that plays bass and harmony might want a job? And Tim says, I know one guy, but but he's off the road. I don't know if he would be interested. But mm-hmm. anyway, long story short, I ended up joining the Osborne Brothers and stayed with them, well, until Sonny retired and stayed with Bobby until Tim and I started the Farmhands back in, in 2010. Okay, okay. And is that, um, is that band uh, no longer together? The farmhands. The farmhands. You know, no, they. They. I think they're still playing. I mean, I. I, I left them in September of this past year. Tim was one of these guys who, you know, and we jokingly said, you know, he would play 365 days a year if he could string them close enough together. You know, <laughs> yeah. I've never known anybody that loves. Maybe Willie Nelson loves the road more than Tim. I yeah. Don't know. Okay. But. Uh, and as much as I loved to play and, and perform, you know, I, I really wanted to focus also on writing. And there was so much writing I wanted to do and co-writing I wanted to do uh-huh. and things that I just couldn't do on that schedule. And so, yeah. so last September, you know, I left and, and they, they replaced me with a couple of people. Okay. And, okay. and that's yeah. when I started really focusing on getting the, the solo album out and uh, and start figuring out the, my next stage. So this is really your first um solo project as a uh, under your name as a headliner right it really is uh you know it, i had never really thought about it i was always happier in a band and, mm-hmm. and of course i'm you know putting a band together to do the festivals and things that i've always done you know that, that will be my band but um but yeah this is the first time i've actually released something on a you know nationwide or worldwide scale with my name on it instead of a band's name it's a, it's a a little, a little unusual for me. Yeah. Will the band have a name? Uh, I'm sure eventually. I haven't haven't really decided on anything yeah. <laughs> yet. But uh, yeah, I'm sure we will eventually. Yeah. So what will um, what will it look like uh, to to get out on the road once once the world lets us out again? Do you do you have a, yeah. uh, hopefully a schedule planned? Or are you still in the planning stages of what what kind of performance schedule you guys will have? Well, I, I, I've done a lot of work, solo work, uh, since I left the farmhands. Just you know, just me and a guitar, uh, songwriter festivals and songwriter, you know, a little, oh, little right. theaters yeah. and churches and that sort of thing. So I've done a, a lot of that anyway, and I continue to do that. The um, the the band uh, those those dates will primarily be bluegrass festivals. Mm-hmm. Okay. When uh, so the record the the new album is called uh, the Secret of Life. Do I have that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. when is it out? Is it out now? No, it actually yeah, the the first single is out. The album gets released on uh, the twenty second of May. Okay, so so we're uh, we're late April when we're recording this. So uh, about about a month then. Yeah, um, tell me a little bit about this record. What uh, I, I presume that all or most of them are songs that you've written. It's all songs I've written, uh, and it's a little bit of an anthology because what I, I I wanted to do was. Was to reach back into the into the catalog and pull out a few songs that I had recorded in years past that mm-hmm. that have either you know been out of print or been otherwise kind of unavailable for a long time, and then the uh, the other half of the album is all new songs. And so, um, one of the first things I did was I brought in Danny Roberts. Danny, you know, from the Tradition Days, that yeah. I brought Danny in to co-produce with me. Okay, and uh, it's the first time Danny and I had been in the studio together in over twenty years. Wow, and. It was great. He's he's just an incredible producer. He's always loved the studio and he's got a great ear for it and yeah. and and I knew we were you know, we were good enough friends that, you know, the gloves would be off. Nobody was worried about, you know, saying, I don't like it this way or what do you think about this? Yeah. We're really comfortable and and so I, there's no doubt that the record is it's better than I even dreamed it would be and a lot of that is because because Danny was there. Mhm. Cool. Um and and this is in the bluegrass uh genre, correct? Yeah, I mean it's it, it's not bluegrass in the stereotypical sense. It's it's very acoustic. You know, there's lots of you know fiddle and and dobro and of course acoustic guitar and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's some straight ahead bluegrass songs on it, but there's also some really you know acoustic country you know middle of the road kind of stuff. Do you have a target date? Presuming that uh, again the world gets back to normal soon, when you guys will hit the road with this? 
Well, uh, uh, the plan is to we'll be performing uh, hopefully at IBMA yeah. uh, convention, which will be late September, early October. Uh, the biggest, I guess, the, the largest target date as far as festivals will be 2021. So many of this year have canceled anyway. Right. And so, you know, we're we're kind of shooting for next year being the big festival year. What will you do personally in between? Is writing music uh, take up enough time for you that, that, uh, that that's kind of what you get to focus on now? Well, I'm doing, of course, a lot of that. Once the uh, Ascending the World opens back up and it's, and it's reasonably similar to what we left. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll still go back to doing some of the solo dates and, and yeah. the, the songwriter shows and that sort of thing. I'll still do those and, and really enjoy those too. So I'm hoping that, uh, that at least my fall I'll be back doing that as well. Yeah. Do you have something on your uh, musical bucket list that uh, uh, you're still looking forward to, something that you haven't quite accomplished yet that, that's on the horizon or in, in the uh, – uh, something that you're looking towards that you still would like to like to really see that happen. You know, there's it's, it's funny. There's lots of things I, I think I would love to do again, just because I didn't appreciate it as much the ah, first time. Okay, uh, if that makes sense. The yeah, very sure. first bluegrass festival I ever played. Uh, I mean, that, that I was ever I attended. I actually performed the very first time I was inside. Uh, the Ryman Auditorium, I was playing the wow. Grand Ole Opry. The very first time I was inside the Bluebird, I was doing a songwriter's round. Wow. You know, and and as much as I loved it at the time, it, you look back on that and you realize that, you know, what these wonderful, iconic experiences. And so that's, I think, as much as anything else, I'm looking forward to, to playing the Opry again and playing the Bluebird yeah. again and, and, and hopefully appreciating it from a, a new vantage point. Yeah, I like that perspective. I... I... I would guess that that's not an answer a lot of people would would think of. So that's I like that. That's cool. <laughs> um, so the new record again is the Secret of Life um, coming out uh, May twenty second. I think you said. Um, where where can yep. people get it? Uh, how can they reach out to you? Get in touch. Maybe find some of your earlier catalog stuff. Sure. Um, uh, of course, Pine Castle Records is a label, uh, so it'll be through all of the regular. Um, you know, outlets that, uh, you know, Amazon and all of that stuff. They can also uh, always get any of my stuff directly through my website, which is just DarylMosley.com. And, uh, and so any of the the, the old stuff that I've, that I've got available is, is available through my website as well. So you've got older catalog stuff there, too, with the, with the new tradition yeah. and the farmhands and those types of things. Yeah. Yeah. The new tradition stuff is hard to get because it's out of print. Some of the, the farmhand stuff I can still get, obviously. But, yeah. Uh, and, and I've got, you know, there's a, an album that I did of, of, of a gospel album from a few years ago of songs that I had written that, that's available. It was never released on a national scale. It was just something that I did. Mm -hmm. But, okay. uh, and, yeah, I do have all that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Daryl. This has been great, and uh, I appreciate your time, and best of luck with the new record. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the support, and, uh, and, uh, and thanks again. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of Americana Music Profiles. Find us on iTunes at Americana Music Profiles and on the Internet at AmericanaRhythm.com.